is International Master Eric Kislik, and today we're going to look at the game between Magnus Carlsen and Radoslav Voltasek. I think I pronounced that correctly. Played in round five of the Gashimov Memorial. It was a very nice game by Carlsen, almost perfectly played, very nice attacking idea, and basically came out of the gates with a slightly unusual idea, but he put, put his opponent under pressure, and uh, yeah, I mean, when you're under pressure from Carlsen, it's very, very hard to defend, so... Let's uh, start from the beginning and see how it went. It went e4, c5, and Carlson went for knight c3. And my assumption is that he was hoping to go for something. For instance, if knight c6, perhaps he was planning to play knight f3 and just kind of take his opponent out of the usual sort of knight or d6 type of lines he was his opponent was aiming for. So his opponent played d6, and now he played d4. And I've definitely seen some grandmasters playing this before. But it is a little bit of an unusual idea because he has to move his queen again after the move knight c6. But Carlson's opening plan was just to go queen to d2, b3, bishop to b2, and queen side castle, which is a very, very aggressive setup. So he may have ideas of f3, g4, or simply going f4 and knight f3. It's a lot of aggressive ideas here. So let's see how his opponent continued here. Knight f6, Carlson went ahead with b3 e6, bishop to b2. So all looks pretty normal for both sides, um, you know, after Carlson's slightly unusual idea. And here his opponent went for a6. And at first this move sort of surprised me, but now when I look at it, it actually makes sense because what he does when he plays b5 aiming for b4 is he forces white to defend the pawn on e4. And this can make white play slightly more passively than he normally would have. So after queenside castle, b5, now there is that threat of b4. So we do have to watch after the e4 pawn. So Carlson just went for f3. And here it looks like his opponent was a bit lost. So now I think the best would have just been to go bishop to e7. If h4, well, an interesting idea is actually to go h5 and then simply go bishop to b7 and castle. And it might look like black's king is a bit unsafe here, but it's actually not easy to find a specific focal point to attack in black's camp. Because h7 is safe, g7 is safe, and it's not easy to plow open the king side. So looks like black has a pretty solid position. At least this would have been better than what was played in the game, because I think what was played in the game was probably just a, just a pure mistake. So we played h5 now. Now Carlson got to go knight h3, which was a very nice move. Now the knight is excellent on g5. It's not a complete outpost square because eventually f6 could be played, but it is a very good square for the time being and there's no easy way to chase it away. So after bishop e7, he went for knight g5. Another way to play is he could just move his king out of the way and develop his worst place piece, his bishop on f1. For instance, g3, bishop g2. This would have been another way that would have been better for white. So his opponent went for h4, which I think was simply a bad move and the start of a lot of problems after this. So much better would have just been to simply castle. And I know it may look dangerous to castle into the attack, but let's say white just prepares, you know, king b1, bishop b7, f4, and plays bishop e2. It's actually not that simple to get to black's king here. So I, I think it wouldn't have been that easy to actually try to break this down. So this looks like by far the best defense. So you'll see what happened in the game. Essentially, after this h4 move, black objectively should have had almost no chances. So Carlson simply went for f4, which was good, because now the e4 pawn is safe because the knight keeps everything under control. So bishop b7 was played. Carlson simply went for king b1, just slightly improving his king position. Rook c8 was played, just improving his worst place piece, putting the rook on the open file. Carlson simply developed with bishop to e2. And I really liked his plan of just simply playing rook h to e1 and having ideas of trying to prepare e5 in the near future or even having some knight g5 sacrifice ideas. So queen c7 was played, getting off of the file. Carlson went for, for rook h e1. Here a really nice idea is to try to go for bishop to d3 with the idea of e5. And the point is, if black ever takes here, White will have knight takes b5, kind of opening up the bishop on b2, controlling e5. So there's some pretty nasty threats here that are very, very difficult to defend against. I don't even see a natural way for black to defend this. 
So black went for knight h7, just challenging the knight on g5, and now knight takes h7, rook takes h7 was played. And now I found a pretty natural idea. I mean, I was thinking, well, how can I bring all of these pieces into the attack to kind of bear down on the king, open things up, and basically from seeing a lot of very similar combinations to this, I was, my first thought was, well, what if we just go knight d5? Can we just play it? Well, if we play knight d5, yes, we do sacrifice a piece, but what ends up happening here is we're able to play bishop to d3, and the problem is, what does he do here? Because let's say if something like knight to a5, if we go bishop d3, here's the problem. If the rook goes back, then the bishop can take the pawn, and the pin is quite deadly along the e-file. There's no way to defend that e7 bishop, so white's going to win a lot of material. So the big problem is, what does black actually do here? So for instance, if here, we can go bishop to d3, hitting the rook, and this is a big problem again, because if g6, there's bishop to f6, and if rook to h5, here I have the nice solution. Rook takes, and if the king takes, we're able to check and pick up the undefended rook due to the check. So actually, in this case, everything is lost. Um, if queen takes, there's rook e1 pinning and winning the queen. So knight d5 is actually a pretty natural sacrifice. Um, you know, it kind of makes you wonder what he may have missed here. He may have just been very confident in g4 and played it and perhaps not spent that much time thinking. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident with a little bit more time or, you know, if this was a puzzle, it would be quite simple for him to solve. So anyway, g4 was played, which also is a pretty natural move. Part of the idea is, okay, if he goes here, we can always go g5. And um, so black took on passant, h takes g3, h takes g3, bishop f6. And now Carlson went for bishop to d3, keeping an eye on the rook, aiming for e5, trying to win a piece. Rook h8 was played, protecting the rook. And now it was actually a bit more complicated than it may have looked. So now actually what black's main idea is, is to try to go for knight to d4 and open up the c file. And I found a very nice, but also kind of subtle way to deal with that. So if I go rook f1 now as sort of a prophylactic move, now if knight to d4, I can play the move e5. And the point is I'm freeing the e4 square from my knight. So if d takes, now I have knight to e4. And this is a very powerful move because I'm hitting the bishop here. So I'm basically opening up everything here. And if, if black takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, there are big problems with the, with the center here because I'm threatening to just win a piece. So if rook to d8, I can just play queen to f2 and white has a completely winning position. So this, um, yeah, this would have been a, a pretty straightforward way to play it. Is a little bit subtle though, so quite easy to miss. But with the exception of these two missteps of playing g4, um, Carlson's play was close to perfect. So he went for g4, knight to d4 was played. Now there are two threats threatening to go here or here. And he's just trying to get a discovery against the c3 knight. So here Carlson played rook e3, nice move, just controlling the f3 square so there's no fork. King f8 was played. Now knight e2 was a nice move. Just trying to basically exchange away the bishop and uh, you know, try to build up the attack just based on the fact that he won't have any real defensive pieces over here. So um, actually much better than the game would have been to trade off bishops and then go queen c5. And then here, if black plays rook h4, actually black is pretty solid because let's say black gets to go king to g8. If we just look around the board at black's pieces, the rook and the queen lined up here, the other rook on h4, Black is actually quite solid here, so it's not going to be easy to actually conduct the attack here. So white is better. White definitely has some attack, but it's not going to be easy to execute it. So in the game, bishop c3 was played, and he was probably hoping that Carlson would trade queens, but Carlson made the very smart decision to keep the queens on the board for two main reasons. One is that black's king is actually less safe than white's king. So if, if, uh, if white can open things up, black will be in some serious trouble. Also, white's queen, I think, is more powerful. So you'll see in a couple moves, the queen reaches a very powerful position. So if black tries to trade queens with queen c5, we go queen g3, and then we go g5, and uh, we just build up the attack from there. So uh, rook c5 was played, and Carlson played the very strong e5. 
which was quite powerful. I mean, that was one of the main ideas why it was trying to play for. So, um, yeah, and one of the ideas is, let's say if rook to d5, we can play queen a7. That's quite an annoying move over here. So d takes e5 was played, and now f takes e5. And now one of the big problems is how to defend f7. The king is very vulnerable. One idea is to just simply pile up the rooks here and just target f7 directly. Another idea is just to jam the pawn down there, g5, g6. How exactly does black defend f7? I think black is completely losing now. So black tried rook h1, which does make sense. If rook c7, we can just go g5 and try to go for g6. I think black must be totally lost. So in the game, rook h1 was played, which did make some sense to try to trade off a pair of rooks. Takes, takes, rook to h2. And now there's a very, very strong attack coming up with rook h8 check and queen g5 check. So um, Carlson's opponent basically gave up here. Uh, he played rook takes e5, which was pretty much the same as resigning. Rook h8 check was played, king e7 and queen a7 check. And the point here is if king f6, which is the most natural move, we can actually just throw in this move g5 check, which is a nice little move to throw in to distract the rook, and then we just pick off the piece. So black, um, yeah, black does have uh, two pawns for the piece, but there's really no chance here. The king is in terrible shape, a bunch of pawns are falling, and this is a completely losing position. So Really a very powerful game by Carlsen, but quite a suspicious game by his opponent. The move h5 and later playing h4 really was not called for in the position, and simply castling the king um, actually would have made it very difficult for Carlsen to conduct the attack, and I'm really curious how he would have conducted it. But as the game went, Carlsen just pretty, pretty much blew his opponent off the board. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.